Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this meeting of uh, Finance and Corporate Services. We have uh, seven meetings on the agenda uh, and appropriate amount of time allocated before six. Uh, so we'll get right into it. Could I get a mover for the consent items moved by Councillor Galloway Sealock? Uh, oh, wait one second here. I just need to click on this. Councillor Gazzola. I just have a couple of questions I would like to. Sorry, could you repeat that? I say I have a couple of questions I would like to ask. On which item? Uh, on number one to start with, and uh, on the um, neighborhood association, number three. Number one and number three. Okay, so a uh, reminder to the new members of council then, so typically Councilor Gazzola is requesting that these items, which we usually would not ask questions on or discuss, he's asking to move them out. Um, so we can ask questions on them. That requires a motion as moved by Councilor Gazzola. So I'll take that motion now. Those in favor of moving them to discussion and opposed. That carries. Councilor Gazzola, when you're ready. Or, um, pardon me, on item number one. Oh, there you go. Okay, go ahead. No, on item number one, is, is this a new program? Mr. Bloom. Uh, through the chair, uh, yes, from the province, although the Small Business Center, uh, so initially this program was launched by the City of Toronto. We, our Small Business Center, launched a smaller version of that pre-funding, and now the province has come in with funding to support this across the province. So it's not new to us, but it's new as a provincially, provincial-wide mandate. Okay, I understand you, the, this, uh, there was a pilot project last year. Uh, can we see the results of that pilot project? Uh, through the chair, I'm happy to email council after if that's sufficient or, or the councillor directly uh, the results of the work so far. Yeah. The other, uh, do we have uh, budgeted financial statements for this program? Actually for the entire program? Can, can those be distributed to council? Uh, through the chair, we can certainly provide what uh, uh, the, the financial structure of the pilot to date, as well as in, un, under this scenario, what it would look like based on the $90,000 contribution, if that's what the council is looking for. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And Councilor Cazola, there's no other, other questions, so we can move on to item number three. Yeah. On, on item number three, I wanted, uh, wonder if there, are there any new, uh, new lit organizations here? Are there any changes from where we've been? Uh, through the chair, no, there, there are no new organizations. The, um, the one change you'll note is in uh, Ward 6, uh, um, the Chandler Mowat Neighborhood Association, or who was formerly called the Chandler Mowat Neighborhood Association, changed their name to the North 6 Neighborhood Association. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's an association in the ward that I represent, the Pine Grove Neighborhood Association. It's not listed here. I, I can check into. I can check into Pine Grove. I don't believe it's it's considered um, active. Yeah. Okay. I, I like. Yeah. Okay. I, I wonder if you could, before this gets finalized next week, if we could check that. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hildebrand. So there's. Uh, oh, Councillor Marsh. Yeah. Just a question. If a group of neighbors wants to start a new neighborhood association in an area that doesn't yet have one during 2019, will they need to wait till 20 till a year from now to be approved for affiliation or or not? The regular through you, Mr. Uh, Chair Davy, the regular process is for them to uh, send a letter of intent to myself, and then uh, we would work with the neighbor um, with the district. Uh, or the the facilitator of the area, and um, and they would work with the the neighborhood association in the area, and and then once there's an agreement, if the if the group group is going to become affiliated, then a report comes forward. So we don't have to wait. We can we can send a report forward, and then it can be they can be put on the the list for uh, affiliated groups. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So it's been moved by Councillor Galloway Sealock. Those in favor. And opposed, that carries. And we'll move on to the discussion items. Number one, the business plan status update. Mr. Chapman. 
Thank you, Chair Davey and members of the committee. Staff are pleased to be here today to present the proposed 2019 business plan for your consideration. And if supported today, it will be ratified as a part of final budget day on January 31st. As committee members are aware, the City adopts a four-year strategic plan which lays out Council's vision uh, and also broad goals to be achieved over the term of Council. And then each year we bring forward a business plan which spells out the priorities for action to achieve that vision. One thing I would also mention is that in bringing me on board, Council identified a number of clear priorities and one of those to, was to improve and streamline communications with Council and the public around the work of the organization. And so I'm pleased to report today that we've made improvements to the business planning process to make it more efficient and also to include more meaningful reporting for Council and for the public. As an example, in this transition year between strategic plans, we've combined three reports into one as we reflect on the past year, the past four years, and also preview the 2019 work. As I mentioned, uh, this is the year that we will close out the old strategic plan and the 2019 priorities reflect that. One of the key findings that you'll see in the report and Karen will speak to is that we found over time we've been including too many items on the business plan and as a result we've had less than desirable completion rates on those projects. In 2019 we've been deliberate in putting forward projects that we are confident that can be completed given the available resources. Our review of best practices also showed not surprisingly that where councils focus on fewer items more items get completed. And we've learned from other cities that where business plan items are included on performance plans for individual staff, completion rates can be as high as 90 percent. And this is something that we're making progress on in the organization. As you know, this is a transition year and so the project list in front of you today coincides with the last year of our current strategic plan. On January 29th, we have a strategic session scheduled with Council where we'll start the work with Council to build a new plan for this four-year term of Council. And after that, those priorities will be reflected in business plans in 2020 and the years beyond. So with that, I'll turn it to Karen Cooper to walk you through the details of the presentation. Thank you very much, Dan. Can everyone hear me? Great. Um, so this presentation is fairly um, concise. I'm going to go over a little bit of the background information. I'm going to review with you the results from 2018, the results from 2015 to 2018, which was the last term of council, and uh, outline for you the proposed business plan projects for 2019 and conclude with the next steps. So Kitchener is uh, very fortunate in having an over 20 year period and history of developing its strategic plans. It's quite unique among municipalities in Ontario uh, for having such a long history with strategic planning. And certainly a lot of the um, improvements that are evident in the city of Kitchener resulted from the community priorities and council's realization of those priorities in terms of specific projects. Our community vision is together we will build an innovative, caring and vibrant Kitchener. That has uh, been the case for the last 20 years as was the corporate mission providing valued services for our community. There are five theme areas to the strategic plan. Open government, strong and resilient economy, safe and thriving neighbourhoods, sustainable environment and infrastructure and effective and efficient city services. This is the uh, strategic plan. You'll see that it's a fairly, uh, fairly short document, very succinct. This is the business plan. It's a lot thicker. There's a lot more detail in terms of specific projects that go into delivering on the strategic plan. The business plan is one of the tools to implement the strategic plan and it includes the administrative operations as well as the strategic priorities that Council wants to achieve. It provides input into the budget and in um, other municipalities it's reflected on individual performance objectives and as Dan mentioned this last area about individual performance objectives is one of the things that the, our office is um, investigating. Dan also mentioned that this is a transition year and the important part about being a transition year is this is the time to finish off projects from the previous term of council and that term of council strategic priorities and to look forward to what the new priorities are going to be under this strategic plan. Next week we'll be um, presenting to council an outline of uh, the strategic plan as part of your orientation session but we're also going to be previewing um, some draft goal statements that we have developed after a consultation period to get some council input and we'll explain that process more. But next week is the time to talk about um, new initiatives um, and we're looking for council input on that. 
This presentation focuses on what Council has accomplished and what it's going to accomplish over the next year to uh, finish out the last, um, ter last period for the, strategic, the existing strategic plan. So in 2018, there were 92 projects proposed and 27 ongoing programs. As at December 31st, we completed 14 of those 92 projects. 46 projects are in progress. 31 projects were delayed on hold or not started and one project was cancelled. So you can see, and historically um, this represents the um, track record of the City of Kitchener in being fairly ambitious in what it wants to accomplish and um, we're not able to deliver everything in the time period that uh, was initially contemplated. So you'll see in 2019 we've made very significant progress in limiting the number of projects and concentrating them on strategic projects. Over the term of Council, there were 225 projects that were initiated over that period of time and 27 ongoing programs. We completed a little less than uh, half, we completed a little more than half of the, the projects and uh, 46 projects are still in progress. 76 projects were delayed over that period of time. They were either put on hold or not started and 11 projects were cancelled. I'd like to go over some of the 2015 and the 2018 Council um, achievements. There have been some very significant achievements and I'm new to the city as, as most of you know and I'm absolutely impressed with the quality of work that the City of Kitchener staff in, consult in, in cooperation with their community partners and with the oversight of Council has achieved. Um, one of the um, significant uh, um, uh, accomplishments was the Engage Kitchener platform, the community engagement policy and the participatory budget policy. This was all under the category of the strategic plan uh, of the strategic plan's open government priority. In terms of its strong and resilient economy, significant accomplishments were in the Make It Kitchener endeavor, which won awards um, for its innovation, the developing the new mandate for Center in the Square, and Digital Kitchener and the Innovation Lab. These are things that Council can be um, extremely proud of. They uh, are, represent leadership um, across municipal sectors. Um, if you could have a favorite, I guess this would be uh, my favorite in terms of the uh, Love My Hood initiative. This has been incredibly powerful and uh, is looked at across Canada in terms of being um, very innovative, demonstrates caring and demonstrates vibrancy in the neighborhood. Some of the examples are community gardens that were initiated. Over 16 community gardens were initiated. Um, ad additional efforts were made in terms of developing placemaking, and uh, the overall um, Love My Hood endeavor as a, as, a, as a planning program was extremely successful. Council also made some significant achievements in sustainable environment in infrastructure through its business plan. We've highlighted two for you tonight. One is the street light LED conversion, and the other is the integrated stormwater master plan. And uh, this is the Henry Sturm, uh, Sturm Greenway that's illustrated here. And uh, I wish I had included the picture of what it looked like before because it was a concrete channel with water going through. This is absolutely uh, a brilliant initiative. One of the other significant achievements in terms of effective and efficient city services was the business plan. Uh, in the business plan was the fire master plan completion. So for 2019, we're proposing 73 items. 10 of those are new projects, three are new ongoing programs, and 45 are projects continuing from 2008 to be completed in 2019, and 15 are continuing ongoing programs. You'll have in your report as well, um, the list of 2019 business plan items. I won't go through each item, um, but you'll see that there's significant work that reflects um, input from across the corporation in terms of, for example, reviewing the Make It Kitchener strategy, reviewing municipal roadway speed limits, the Mayor's Inclusion Task Force, 
the review the provisions of development services, a comprehensive grants review, and a corporate project management needs assessment. New programs include intergovernmental relations. Before, there were some specific initiatives about intergovernmental activity, so we've created a program to um, list the projects underneath that title. We see that in the future that's going to be an increasing area for uh, council interest. The uh, corporate sustainability program is new. Um, it's a creation of a revolving energy efficiency fund. Implementation of the Sustainable Urban Forestry Program after Council approval of the, um, the plan will result in significant changes across the corporation. One of the things I wanted to mention is that um, these new programs um, sort of bridge the gap between the existing strategic plan and the proposed new official plan, which you'll hear more about next week. So in terms of next steps, it's our recommendation that the City of Kitchener business plan project list that's included in your report as Appendix B be approved subject to the budget deliberations. Following approval of that, um, staff will be developing a business plan document and that will be ready to be published and posted on the website in March. Um, after that happens, staff will be back regularly at least three times a year to report to Council on the progress that's made on the specific projects. And that concludes my presentation. If you have any questions, we'd be pleased to answer them. Thank you kindly, Ms. Cooper. Um, first question, Councillor Ioannidis. Thank you, Chair Davey. Um, I don't really have much of a question. I just prepared to move the recommendation with the following of, of an addendum to it as well, adding to the business plan when the time's appropriate. Okay, thank you. And uh, just for the benefit, everyone should have a copy of that uh, motion in front of them. Councillor Singh. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just uh, quick questions. Um, I'm glad to see some items like the uh, community center review, um, something we've asked and talked about in the past as well. Uh, I'm hoping the review will also um, specifically focus on timings as to when the, how long the centre is open or the timing of the days where we've received ongoing feedback that sometimes it doesn't coincide with um, you know, the patrons' desire, especially during summer times. Uh, will the, uh, the timing uh, be also in consideration as the review? Um, Mr. May can answer that question. Mr. May? So through you, Mr. Chair, uh, that's something, uh, definitely something on our radar. The first two things we need to get out of the way first is the affiliation policy and the use of space policy. Uh, but I know that Mr. Roth has this as a, his own priority to look at expanded hours. Okay, Mr. May, you want to just hold for one second? Just hold off one second. I want people to be able to hear the answers to the questions. Yeah. Okay, I think we're good. Sorry. Uh, Councillor Singh, you want to Thank you. Just one more. Uh, the comprehensive grant review, can you just uh, elaborate a little bit more as to what the focus will be? Yes, that's again Mr. May's area. Mr. May? So through you, Mr. Chair, um, it's been about 10 years since we created what was uh, known back then as a community investment policy that really set up the Tier 1 and Tier 2 grants. Since that time, we've uh, experienced a number of changes that could be made administratively to make it easier for grant applicants. Uh, the other big thing that's happened is more grants have appeared, and so we want to look at whether we can streamline those grants to make it much easier for people applying. And so it will look uh, primarily at uh, the community grants, so Tier 1 and Tier 2, but also uh, at how we might be able to collapse some grants together. Will there be an opportunity to review, like, again, uh, part of the... Um with tier, tier 2 specifically and Love My Hood. Will there be, over time, some sort of link between the two as organizations uh, establish themselves and they would want to access more reoccurring funding as opposed to just one-off projects? So through you, Mr. Chair, I believe that uh, we should consider that Tier 1 and Tier 2, uh, as they stand today, may be very different than they are tomorrow. One of the issues that this council uh, raises on regular occasions is the difficulty in keeping money in Tier 2 because groups go to Tier 1, and so we want to look at a different model completely. So, uh, yes, all of what you're describing will be a part of the scope. Thank you. Glad to hear. Thank you, Councillor Marsh. Oh, thank you. I, um, 
I'm just a little curious. Uh, I know that uh, staff would never try to hide anything, but I, I'm trying to understand why it is that we don't have the complete list. We've got the numbers that you've outlined, the, the number of uh, projects and programs that have been on hold or delayed or cancelled, but we don't have that the corresponding list of details. And I, I'm, I'm curious as to why not yet and, and when. So the complete list is on the website and the, docu the, the document is quite long and it's easier to access on the city website. I see. If okay. you'd like a hard copy, we can make a hard copy available. Just a, no, I don't need a hard copy, but I, I think it would be prudent to, I, I, I would like to ask for a, a link to that, that location uh, to be sent to all of council. Sure. Uh, and also to flag that when the 2019 business plan is posted on the city website, just please um, keep us in the loop. Uh, sure. Uh, I'm sure that, you know, we'd, we'd come across it, but it, if we could just be given a link so that it's, it's at top of mind when it comes online. Thanks. Absolutely. Thank you. Councillor Chapman. Yeah, I was just wondering, um, I see that the participatory budgeting item is under, um, what does it say, a strategic item. Could you just give us a, an update on where it is now and where where it will be a year from now two years from now is it are, are there plans to um you're talking about um possibly collapsing tier one and tier two is this would this then be put out for public um participation of, of some sort um just wondering where your where your thoughts are mr may so through you mr chair the um uh, the participatory budgeting uh, initiative that the city undertake, uh, undertook was a pilot project, and I believe a report is coming back sometime in 2019 with the results of that um, uh, pilot as well as recommendations. So when you refer to it as a strategic item, what does that mean? It means that it's um, uh, not core service, it's not our core business, but it moves the objectives of the strategic, alan, uh, strate strategic plan along significantly. So one of the elements in the strategic plan was to make uh, decision making for um, citizens more accessible, and so this would be a, a very big implementation of that aspect. Okay, so we'll just wait for the report. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Schneider. Thank you, Chair Davey. Uh, just wondering if in the development of the water leaks policy, uh, there's a uh, possibility of the um, technology and, and the monitoring that would give uh, a citizen an early warning of their water use being higher than usual? That's um, uh, Mr. Lautenbach. Denise? Uh, through the Chair, so the water leaks policy will be coming back to Council in the first quarter of 2019. Uh, it's certainly something that we can uh, comment on as part of the report that comes back to look at, um, you know, some of the, the monitoring technology that, that uh, is in place. Um, I do believe that we do have that ability for individual customers if there are issues with, um, you know, their, their consumption to, to monitor it over time to see if, if there are fluctuations. But the policy will outline some of the relief that potentially can uh, come through that program when it comes back to Council. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Vibanovich. Well, thank you. Uh, just uh, very quickly, a couple things. I mean, first of all, um, kudos to staff as you look through this list and look at everything that um, was accomplished during the past term. Um, there was a lot of uh, lot of work done both by um, council and staff um, to to move the agenda forward in a variety of areas. And so, I want to uh, express my thanks in that regard. Just building on uh, that last question from Councillor Schneider. Um, on the water leaks, I, I think it would, you know, in addition to looking at a policy, it would be good to look at, is there a line of business in fact there? So, um, you know, much like we rent water heaters and so on, you know, could we, I don't know, five bucks a month, whatever, you get, uh, we'll install the uh, the device that actually monitors this for you and it's almost like an, you know, an insurance pool um, in, in a sense so that if if you do end up getting like a $600 bill, it's actually covered if you're part of that uh, plan. So maybe mm -hmm. that's something that can be looked at as, as, uh, as part of that. Ms. McGoldrick? So through you, Chair Davey, um, 
the mayor raises a good point in terms of uh, the utilization of technology. We are currently, there is advanced metering infrastructure um, related to the metering um, device itself. Um, and in addition, we are looking at um, market opportunities related to a leak detection in a system. So it's, um, there's two opportunities there that staff are currently monitoring. One of the, um, <coughs> currently the constraints around the advanced metering infrastructure is having the ability to do that on the gas side. Um, so we're looking at where those capabilities exist um, in terms of vendors on, uh, that are compatible on the water and the gas side. Okay, my next question is just that, and thank you for that, um, is in regards to the long-term financial plan. Um, is the thinking that this would all be completed in, in 2019? Um, and uh, I mean, are we, are we contemplating moving potentially as part of this to a multi-year budget or sort of just curious as to where we might be going with this? The scope, Mr. Lautenbach? Through the chair, uh, in terms of the timing of the long-term financial plan, it is planned to be completed this year. So the target date of having a final um, approved plan in place is September of 2019. So that we will be bringing back a report to council likely in late spring, so May, uh, June timeframe for consideration in terms of draft. Uh, it will be uh, looking at a number of options in terms of some recommendations based on best practice. Uh, Multi-year budgeting is certainly something that might be considered as part of it. Uh, there will be a number of recommendations that are part of what that we perceive to be part of the plan. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor gallery Silak. Yeah, I just wanted to get some confirmation that the update to the Huron Natural Area Master Plan is being a part of the 2019 business plan or can't remember if they said it was 2020. I just want confirmation on that. Ms. McGoldrick. Uh, so through you, Chair Davey, um, I believe uh, Councillor galloway Sealock is referring to the consolidation of the, the, the various parks master plans into, an, into um, what we may call right now an open space master plan, that the initial scoping will occur in 2019 with the um, with the review taking place in, in 2020. Okay, that's all my questions, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Marsh. Yeah, I forgot to just, I have another question, just about evaluation of the um, projects and uh, programs. Is that also um, on the website? I'm sorry, Councillor Marsh. What do you mean about the evaluation? Just of the trying papers? to, um, you know, just how how um, uh, how well we are hitting our targets in terms of um, uh, <clears throat> just meeting our our strategic objectives. So, um, Councillor Marsh, um, you'll be getting a report from um, Compass Kitchener, and they're doing some significant work on evaluating uh, the work that has taken place over the last four years. And uh, we have a session on the 24th of January, which all Council is invited to, and one of the aspects is going to be evaluating uh, what has been accomplished and some suggestions about how to go forward on increasing the accomplishment rate. On the, th that's this week, 24th of January? Yes. Oh, okay. The all advisory, well, that's not really, and in, okay. That sounds like that's more of an all advisory committee meeting. That doesn't sound like a. So, so at that committee, um, Compass Kitchener is getting some feedback, but then Compass Kitchener will be reporting back on evaluation of the objectives uh, in the strategic plan and how well the city has done in terms of addressing them. Right, okay, but my understanding was that, um, and, you know, and I'm aware of the Compass Kitchener process, but I'm just uh, trying to understand, I thought that there were some internal... Uh, uh, On the performance key metrics? Key performance metrics, yeah. yes. So we're going to be reporting back later in the year on the performance metrics. Later in the this, in this year, yes. Okay, great. And then um, the other question I had was regarding the 2019 business plan, if we approve it today, um, uh, does, is that assuming that there's also room to potentially add after the uh, strategic planning session that we have scheduled for next week, 
if there are high priority items that council decides. Is there not room in uh, the 2019 business plan for uh, new strategic objectives? So, or, or sorry, new projects, etc. So there's not much capacity for new projects. Um, and if there are new projects that are desired by council, there's some adjustment to the budgeting or staffing resources that would be required. However, um, in June, with the approval of the new strategic plan, we'll be in a position to influence the 2020 budget in terms of new strategic initiatives and priorities that council wishes to um, put forward. Okay. Perhaps I'm just referring to something that um, uh, predates so, yes, Cooper. Can... I'm just thinking about the 10% that's usually um, allocated for a new uh, year directly after a, an election year. So are you referring to issues related to the budget and or issue papers coming through the budget? Or are you talking about like much later in the year if you want to bring something forward? Is that, I'm not sure what you're... Next week when we have our, um, our strategic session, when we look at what are the priorities of this coming council uh, and, and to, to feed into the strategic planning process. My understanding was that that, that also would potentially... Um, Get, influence the 2019 business plan as well. I believe it's 2020 and beyond, Mr. Chapman. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. So I concur with Ms. Cooper's assessment of how the process will work. What I can say is this, on page 5-4, there's a list of, I believe, 13 items there that represent new additions to the business plan in 2019. And we believe a number of those are aligned to things that we've heard from uh, the environics process, your kitchen or your say, and even council campaigns in our one-on-one -on -one meetings. A good example would be the speed limit review on city streets. Another one would be the, uh, the mayor's task force on inclusion. So there is no additional capacity, idle capacity in the organization, but I take your point that if, as we engage in the strategic plan conversation, something rises to the top as an urgent priority for 2019, then certainly we need to have a conversation with council about how we create capacity for it. Uh, mm -hmm. But I wouldn't want to leave council with the sense that there is there is idle capacity left within the organization to be filled. Right. Um, staff are fully committed based on what's here. We believe many of these things address what we anticipate will be priorities through that process. But if something changes, then we'll engage in that conversation and, and adjust the plan accordingly. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Singh. Yeah, I had two other questions, but I think uh, I quickly want to speak on what uh, Councillor Marsha said. I think she makes a very good point and. Uh, um, especially with the new council um, and having the priorities laid out before us that um, at the end of the day there are things that do arise and I do have confidence that staff would do their best to work with council to figure out a way to, to prioritize them within it. But um, for this or in the, in the future, I do coincide with the suggestion that there be some scope of capacity always left as things arise, as priorities change. Uh, the reason why, quickly, the point I want to make is uh, it's sometimes um, would be difficult for staff to, you know, read the leaves as to exactly what the top priorities of council was based on their, their campaign agendas. Um, that's something that, um, you know, kind of develops on its own when you get in office. Uh, it's a lot different than campaigning than when you come in and realizing what the immediate day-to-day -day issues that may be in your ward. Sometimes you're not aware of it un unless you are an uh, incumbent. Um, so having that type of flexibility, I think, over time would be advisable. So just as a comment. Um, the other two questions that I had, one was on Make It Kitchener, um, the review. Um, would there be a scope for staff to consult with council as part of that review? Mr. Bloom? Uh, through the chair, absolutely. We uh, would imagine probably in this, we expect the public consultation to happen in the fall, but we would anticipate meeting with council ahead of that. Excellent. And the other is a similar question in the Mayor's uh, Task Force on Inclusion. I'm glad to see this item on here, and although it's titled the Mayor's Task Force, but I'm sure this is a strong priority for all members of council, especially for myself as well. Uh, will there be an opportunity for a council uh, feedback on this uh, as you know, as it develops forward. Okay. Good. Yes, Thank by you. the mayor. Okay. Uh, there is there are no further questions before we go to Councillor Hernandez for his item. Uh, I just wanted to. I don't have any questions. I'm I'm comfortable with where we are, and I look forward to the discussion we're going to have at the strategic plan. Uh, I do have some 
hopes and dreams for uh, the 2020 and beyond, but I won't raise them now. Uh, I just did want to add my voice to the uh, development of the water leaks policy. I am very much in the same uh, camp in terms of the uh, of the technology and how we can hopefully leverage our um, our narrowband streetlights, hopefully in within 2020. But I look forward to staff coming back on that. Uh, Councillor Ines, I do have one question for you, or possibly staff. I'm supportive of what you have here. Um, obviously, the, the third clause is kind of jumping ahead to our next meeting, but that's fine. Uh, the only question I have is with respect to, because this, this is all within budget, would be there's no dollars attached to this or resourcing, so I'd ask staff, I guess, or Councillor Ines, what the expectation would be in terms of uh, costs. So I'm not sure, Councillor Andes? Well, I think what's being put forward is really not much of a budget. It's just more or less to set things in motion and to give confidence to the community that we are moving forward with this. I would put the question to staff then as well. Is this something that it's, it's not terribly specific, which I think is good because it gives staff some, some leeway to come back, but is this something that staff thinks they can accommodate within... Uh, the 20, uh, 20, 20, 2020 budget, sorry, 2019 budget. Councilor, uh, Mr. Chapman. Uh, through Mr. Chairman, uh, I think it may be helpful to have this conversation on final budget day when you receive the issue paper that I think was in response to the question that Councilor Marsh posed about staff capacity to move forward planning work generally and affordable housing specifically. Certainly we would envision working with our area partners on the joint inclusionary zoning study. Uh, which would assess the current situation in terms of affordability, provision, and opportunities, and we can start conversation with Kitchener Housing. If Council has greater ambition than that scope of work for the term, then we would discuss that through budget, and it could be resourced accordingly. But I, I agree with uh, Council Arionitis that I believe the scope as it's been defined here is something that we can move forward in 2019. Okay, so just clarity for me, because I, I do want to approve this or vote in favor of it, but uh, so the clarity would be, number one, because this is being added here, this... Councillor Ioannidis' um, addition would also be subject to final budget process, correct? So the ratification of this report happens with the final budget day resolution, so everything will be brought back there, but in the meantime, you'll have a conversation around the issue paper, um, which, ident which paints the picture more clearly around staff capacity to move all of this planning work forward in 2019. Okay, great. And can I ask now, because we haven't received that issue paper as yet. Correct? Not yet, no. Okay, so I guess my concern in approving this is, do we have, can I get an idea of what the, I, I'm assuming there's a staffing or a financial implication to it. Can I get an idea of what that might be before I say yes to this now? Uh, I think what you'll see is a range, uh, as it relates to housing specifically, between accommodating with an existing workload um, to augmenting staff with temporary resources to move this and other planning work forward to full-time staffing additions. Uh, the recommendation has not yet been finalized, and I believe the Council will have decision points along that continuum. Okay. Um, before I speak to Councillor Ines, do you want to speak at the beginning or the end, or do you have a preference on this? Okay. Thank you, Chair Davey. Go ahead. Um, I just want to, before I make my comments, just want to recognize members in the audience. Uh, I have three members from Kitchener Housing, uh, the board members that are here, and also the executive director, Lori Trumper, um, of Kitchener Housing. So, afford as we all know, affordable housing has been an issue that's been brought forward here a few times and has been an issue throughout the community has been a concern and, uh, and it's through our environics and through other studies it's, it's, it's become a focal point for our community and uh, it's a significant concern for our community and having KHI which was historically at one point a city of Kitchener organization and uh, they're now more of a arm's length and they're not they're they're separate organization but we as as the city we do have membership on the board as myself that's on the board and the mayor and one other councillor that was that will be appointed or myself be appointed again um, in the near future and so with that we know that Kitchener Housing has extensive knowledge with regards to affordable housing and they are the experts and being a nonprofit and uh, knowing about today's economic climate, housing in general has become very difficult and how, we can, can, how can we increase supply? So I think uh, it makes strategically sense for the city, for us to work together so that we can 
move move forward and uh, have this community need addressed and give our citizens uh, somewhat of some confidence that we are taking this issue seriously um, it, as well it does align with with our business plan in general when we look at our topics of uh, sustainable I mean safe and thriving neighborhoods and the economic development portion as well so I think it, it, it's, it makes a lot of sense for this to be put forward uh, I mean again it's just it's still going to be under consideration for the strategic planning process but I, I wanted to be clear that this was something that uh, um, the community has been asked for and and having the, the representation with the uh, KHI I think this is a natural fit so that's why I'm putting this forward and as far as the business plan itself I'm happy to move the recommendation um, I think it's great job by staff and they always do a lot of work regardless of what we put forward to them and they always continue to uh, achieve good results so uh, adding in any additional items I'm confident that they can they can always squeeze some some extra effort in and uh, but uh, as well we aren't really committing any dollar amount at this point it's more or less um, strengthening a relationship that we already are with KHI and giving that board uh, some confidence as well. Thank you, Councillor. So there are quite a few people in the queue now. Uh, just a reminder, we do have, um, we have to begin our next meeting at 7 p.m. and we have still have two items this agenda, so I'd ask if everyone could try and keep their uh, comments succinct, starting with uh, Mayor Rabinovich. Well, thank you very much, and um, I will uh, support um, the motion, I don't know if it's been seconded yet. Um, actually, we're in committee, so we don't need seconder. Um, and I uh, want to thank Councillor Ioannidis for bringing it forward. The only thing I would ask uh, Councillor Ioannidis is if um, after Kitchener Housing Inc., we can add the words um, and other community partners. And if that's friend, I know we don't do friendly, but if you can uh, make that adjustment, I think that would be uh, helpful um, because obviously we need to work with the region um, on the issue of affordable housing as well as uh, other partners. As an example, just uh, recently, um, one of our other uh, agencies in town has requested to have a, a meeting to explore uh, the role that, that, that they play. And I'm talking Habitat for Humanity and um, in, in particular um, to, to see how they can uh, continue their presence uh, which has been a long history in our in our community as well but I think uh, this is an, an important first step and uh, I'm glad to see it uh, being added to the 2019 uh, business plan because I also think there will likely um, be a bit of a some attention given to this um, by the federal government in the uh, in the coming year, um, this being a, a federal election year and something that gets talked about a fair bit um, across the country, I wouldn't be surprised to uh, uh, to see a level of interest being there, and uh, we want to make sure that we're ready to uh, to respond to it, not just in Kitchener but throughout the region. I'm sure everyone's filled out their federal budget feedback online survey, but I will say of the, uh, there weren't a whole lot of questions and affordable housing was one of them. Okay, next is uh, Councillor Marsh. Oh, sorry, once. Hold on, Councillor Marsh, one second. Uh, Councillor Knight, I just wanted to respond. Yeah, I, don't, I have no issue with in, including other groups. Um, I think there's many other partners out there to play a role in this, uh, but I just like the role that we have, the, the relationship we have with Kitchener Housing, and not only that, I would like to see that organization, as you had mentioned, uh, with the federal government being in a position to take advantage of those with the help of with with ourselves. So, I have a question you. for Councillor Ioannidis. Actually, go ahead, so Councillor Marsh. Just when uh, when we're looking at the um, this motion, are we? Do you have a particular type of affordable housing along the spectrum? of affordable housing options um, in mind, you know, from housing the hardest to home, um, homeless people all the way to making uh, home ownership affordable. I'm just wondering where. Councillor Ennis, and I just, I want to caution committee, we're not going to get into the specific details of sure, affordable sure. housing, but if you want to respond um, broadly. Well, to put it in a, a in, in a high level, to put it in a high level, Kitchener Housing is is majority designed to be a nonprofit geared to income rentals. So there is some market rent there 
but that's our priority is for to gear to income. Okay, great. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Councillor Schneider. Thank you, Chair Davey. Uh, I will be supporting this. I think it, it just comes in beautifully with uh, our goal of creating an innovative, caring, and vibrant Kitchener. So thank you, Councillor Arnidas, for bringing this forward. Thanks, Councillor Schneider. Uh, Councillor Chapman. Yeah, um, I also commend you for, for this initiative. Um, but I wonder if we could, um, if I could suggest an amendment to, to what you're proposing here, and that be that um, staff be directed to initiate an affordable housing study for the city of Kitchener. And I know it's been said that um, such a study is being done with the region, but if we ever have any hopes of getting inclusionary zoning in this um, city, the first thing they require is a study. And um, I think it would be a good idea to start that study now, and I realize this is a, a budget item, but um, I would hate to think that next year, this, or next week, sorry, this gets lost as we um, come back to the budget. Okay, I, I will take that amendment. I will have some questions on staff um, in terms of the scope of that. Uh, but uh, we can come back to you, Councillor Chapman, if need be. Uh, Councillor Michaud. I'm very pleased to see this uh, brought forth, and I do support it. I think that uh, affordable housing is, is uh, polarizing right across the region, and this is a great start for Kitchener to start this, and I agree with uh, Mayor Bravanovic, um to include community partners as well. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Singh. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. And just uh, in short, uh, I would be enthusiastically supporting this initiative, and I'm very glad to see that um, uh, Councillor Ioannidis uh, had the uh, foresight and is being proactive in wanting to encourage that uh, affordable housing be a, a priority uh, as part of the 2019 business plan. I think uh, we've heard through the budget process as well as today as part of the business plan staff saying that they did look at uh, our campaign materials, our, the things that matter to us through conversation, and I'm sure um, in both those opportunities affordable housing has been foremost in most of, if not all of our minds. It's something that uh, is a gripping issue in our community, and I think Kitchener needs to start taking a lead. Uh, it can't be just a Kitchener-only solution. It needs to be a region solution, so that's why we need to work with all our partners. So glad to see that amendment. But apart from partners, that those partners should also be included, inclusion of uh, both the City of Cambridge and City of Waterloo, because uh, we can't do it alone. We need their cooperation so that we can do it uh, all together and um, start um, seeking for a solution for this, uh, this issue. Thank you. Councillor Gazzola. I really don't know what to think. Uh, it would be heresy to say anything against affordable housing. I'm not really clear what we're being asked to approve here. Um, I, I want to remind everyone that uh, uh, affordable housing is part of social services, which is, uh, comes under the regional mandate. Uh, I ha I've no, uh, no one can be against this, but we do have to stop and ask, uh, you know, what are we asking for here? Um, what kind of dollars are, are we involved with here? Um, as far as working with Kitchener Housing, I, uh, I spent uh, many years uh, on the board of Kitchener Housing. To me, they're the, they're the uh, right arm of the city. Uh, I don't know that, uh, uh, I'm not sure what we're, what we're trying to do. I, I have no problems with Kitchener Housing, and they've done a great job, uh, uh, but uh, most of the funding uh, supporting that comes from from the regional budget. So I, you know, I, I this is asking questions of of what can we do about affordable housing? How much do we want to get involved with it? What is involved? What kind of dollars are involved? So that our that so that our constituents know what it's all about. I, you won't. I'm sure you won't find one person on the streets that says they're opposed to providing affordable housing. Okay, but we, we do need, you know, this is a nice, a nice uh, recommendation, beautiful recommendation, but just what exactly does it mean? I will support it when it comes to a vote tonight, but uh, what we're, I guess we're asking 
for staff to come back with a report that will be part of the uh, of, of, of the business plan. Then we'll see really what does all this mean. We're, 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 I guess we're merely asking them to consider this in our business plan and come back and tell us, should we be there? Is this an area we, we need to be involved in? And to what extent? And uh, what will it cost us? Thank you, Councillor Gazzola. Uh, Councillor Ionetis. I just want a little more clarification on uh, Councillor Chapman's comments because I think from what CEO uh, Deputy, I mean CEO Dan Chapman had mentioned that they already have already inclusionary zoning as a, as, a, as part of the scope of. So I just I, I I'm just I'm not I don't I'm not understanding why what what what's the intent, Councillor Chapman. Yeah, um, inclusionary zoning requires that a study be done on affordable housing and the, the housing situation in any given municipality. So all I'm suggesting is that Kitchener not wait to see what the region is doing or Waterloo is doing or the federal government or the provincial government, but that we initiate our own study because if, if we come to agree that inclusionary zoning is a good thing to adopt, then we ha that's the first thing we have to do. And I'm not saying that, I'm, I'm not proposing that we sit here and discuss inclusionary zoning, but inclusionary zoning, um, Councillor Gozola, what it would allow the city to do is to introduce a bylaw that would require every new residential building to have a, a certain number of affordable housing units. But if we don't do a study, we will never be able to go down that road. And sure, um, it's fine that the region is, is proposing one jointly with the, the city. That may never happen because it's a proposal at this stage. And I'm only suggesting that under this budget that we set aside the, the, the money required to, to engage in this study. Councillor Hedges? I'm not 100% understanding about the study and what that that implication means and and how much those are how much those cost. Um, I would I would like to get a better clarification from staff as to is that what's needed to to have inclu inclusionary zoning as part of the process or Mr. Chapman. Uh, so certainly more detail will be in the budget issue paper when you see it, um, not to preempt that, but perhaps Mr. Reedman can just provide um, some clarity on what's involved in the study and the status of that joint work across the region. Okay, thank you. Mr. Reedman. Through the chair, so right now there is work underway around inclusionary zoning that's through a joint services initiative. It is background data collection work, um, so it's working with the region and the city of Waterloo and uh, seeking some clarity from the province on, on aspects around it. Um, but the issue paper will speak uh, to more clarity about, um, you know, if, if we were to approve this mo uh, motion, the first one, um, uh, through the through the budget process, um, what would be included from an inclusionary zoning, which would cover off, I think, what Councilor Chapman's um, getting at in terms of the full-on study for inclusionary zoning. Okay. So the way I see it, I, we don't need to put that in there. It's already kind of covered. Okay. There's uh, no one else in the queue. I'm just. I'm going to comment. I. I preach. I truly appreciate where. Um, Councillor Chapman is coming from, and it, there may, may come a time when I think we do uh, have to strike out on our own if the region doesn't um, fall through. But I think that we have much more to gain by looking at this region together in terms of the affordable housing, the inclusionary zoning, and having um, an equal playing field. We've already seen what's happened in terms of social services between, say, Kitchener and Waterloo when we didn't look at it holistically across the city. And I would, uh, I would loathe to see that happen in a situation like affordable housing as well. Mayor Benovich. Yeah, and I, I too, um, I think, uh, Councillor Chapman, I see where you're, where you're going with it. And, and I'm not averse to e exploring um, how we can um, quicken the pace in terms of the work that's been doing, which I think is, you know, based on previous conversations we, we've had, um, what, you're, what you're trying to achieve. I think it may be helpful to dialogue about how we may be able to um, perhaps do that amongst all of our partners, 
um, so that it's moving forward in, in lockstep with each other as opposed to going out on our own because I, I, I think, uh, again, we need to sort of look at the whole picture of, of the, the environment we're operating in today and, and um, we need to continue to forge ahead as a community in the things that are important to us as a community. But I think the more things we can do collaboratively together, um, the, the better off we'll be overall. Um, and so I, I would suggest that that maybe we you know explore that um, outside of this particular um, motion and and see how we can uh, work to get uh, us and other partners to um, make this issue a uh, a more significant priority. Okay, so as it stands now, there's no else in the queue. As it stands now, um, we will vote on uh, Councillor Chapman's amendment first, followed by uh, Councillor Ioannidis' uh, main motion. Okay, so Castor, Councillor Marsh. Sorry, yeah, just um, I, I just want to make a comment that uh, you know I I am really glad to see the the. Uh, will of Council is very much in favor of affordable housing and moving forward, and I thank Councillor Ioannidis for bringing this this forward. It really does seem, though, that it's very much in line with the issue paper that I asked for, and so I'm looking forward to seeing the details that will be laid out in, in, in making uh, this motion uh, put into action for 2019. Um, as far as the amendment goes, uh, I'm, I will wait uh, to... Um, to, uh, that what I would be concerned about actually is if we vote now on whether or not to direct um, staff to include a study on inclusionary zoning, if, we, if it fails, um, I, I, I would be concerned about then voting again on, on uh, final budget day uh, to, to, um, to vote on that again based on more information from staff. So I would just suggest that perhaps we, we wait on the budget issue paper to get more clarity before we vote on something that we don't, that most of council doesn't necessarily have all the details on. Okay, so the options are we can vote on it now, we can choose to defer it either to final budget day or until uh, this comes back, the beginning of the motion comes back, um, or we can defeat it and possibly revive it later. So that's where we are now. Uh, I would put it to Councillor Chapman. Yeah, I'll defer the motion for the amendment. Deferred to budget. Okay, very good. So the, now we'll just be voting on uh, Councillor Ennis's main motion on this. Uh, recorded vote's been called for. <coughs> and that carries unanimously. Okay, and now the, uh, sorry, did I get a mover for the main motion? I think I did. Moved by Mayor Vibanovich, the um, business planning status report. Did you, you move the? I moved the whole thing. Oh, okay, Councillor Ennis says he moved the whole thing, so Councillor Ennis. Okay, uh, those in favor? And that carries unanimously as well. Okay, we move on to item number six, the artist in residence appointment. Good afternoon. Hello. Oh, when you're ready. Do we have the presentation? Thank you. Oh, okay. The clerk's loading that up for you right now. Okay. Thank you. Through the chair. So as mentioned in the report, the Artists in Residence program was established 24 years ago in 1995. And it was actually the first municipal program of its kind in Canada. It is a juried uh, process, and the program supports and advocates artistic innovation and excellence in contemporary art practices. So the program works on two levels. It provides an opportunity for regional artists to further develop their practice. And secondly, the artist has a chance to engage the community. So that benefits both the artists and the citizens because the artist creates um, an accessible opportunity for um, the citizens to experience and learn. 
and in turn gains invaluable feedback and inspiration to further develop their practice. And the residency used to focus on visual arts, but uh, for the past four years, uh, with uh, consultations with past um, artists and residents and the public art working group, as well as the Arts and Culture Advisory Committee. The call was expanded to include um, various disciplines such as theater, digital and media works, um, spoken word, literature, and music. So it is my great pleasure to introduce today Mary Neal, who is a community musician, and she has been recommended as the 2019 Artist in Residence. She will be able to give you a little bit more information about her practice and about her proposal for the residency. Mary? Welcome. Okay. Thank you. Whoops. Whoops, that's the wrong one. Sorry. <laughs> Which one do I click? Out oh, there. There we go. Is it thank possible you. to click that link and get to the video? Okay, thank you. Yeah. One day I started asking around to see what I would need to host a junk music jam in a public space when the city of Kitchener asked me to host a jam for their citywide Neighbors Day event. The coverage I received from that event launched my organization. Since then, KW Junk Music has been diverting items from the landfill and recycling plants to build junk instruments and host junk music jams all over Waterloo Region. Our workshops are completely customizable and can be modified to fit the needs of the community requesting our services. Whether it is a participatory short in an interactive theater production, family night at a church, or program designed for a kindergarten class, workshops are carefully designed with the community and led by experienced facilitators. The best part? We bring everything needed to run an event. Just sit back, relax, and participate with the group. One of my favorite moments with KW Junk Music was at a Christmas Eve family service at a local Anglican church. About five minutes into the service, a large group of people came in to join us. They were all from Egypt. The parents brought their families to show them how other Christians celebrate Christmas. Before they left, they asked if they could share one of their songs with the group. We were pleasantly serenaded with jingle bells in Arabic. KW Junk Music brings communities together. KW Junk Music inspires placemaking. KW Junk Music challenges people to consider ways of leading more sustainable lives. We welcome everyone and encourage people to discover or rediscover their musicality. Interested in bringing a fun musical activity to your group? Want an engaging way to talk about sustainability? Contact KW Junk Music today and see how we can support your community through fun, engaging, customizable musical events presented in a sustainable way. So that's a little bit about me and my practice. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about my project that I was wanting to do during this residency. So during this residency, I propose hosting um, workshops at the City of Kitchener Community Centers in order to engage communities across Kitchener. The outcomes for these workshops is threefold. First, to create a junk music a junk instrument that would be fashioned out of junk materials commonly found in the environment around that community or materials with historical significance for that community and other materials brought by participants. Second, we would use junk instruments to co-create a piece of music that reflects that particular community. And lastly, junk instruments created by the community will be made available to the city on an outdoor music wall. The outdoor music wall will feature a map of Kitchener and the instruments created will be placed on the map according to their corresponding community and QR codes will be included to direct people to the YouTube um, video that demonstrate that that um, ha that is of the community compositions. The installation I'm proposing for the city of Kitchener will be unique compared to other music walls and outdoor instruments in other cities as it will be developed through extensive community engagement. Thank you. Thank you. There are a few questions for you, beginning with our Mayor, Mayor Vrbanovich. Well, not, uh, not a question, rather, just uh, uh, I'd be pleased to move this, uh, Mr. Chair, and uh, I think it's a, a great, uh, great initiative for our artists and residents this year. In fact, um, Councillor Johnson may recall this band 
that we brought to Laurier back in the late 1980s from the Peterborough area. And there, there was this sort of this, sorry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, and like there was this whole, they were from the Peterborough anyway, they were really good and, and popular and so kind of thinking, you know, we can even like have a, a concert out on the square maybe as part of this at some point. Mm-hmm. Pass it on to special events, Corey. I'll make a note of it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Michaud? I just want to say I love this. I think I, I read your, your um, application. Your video was awesome. The whole concept is amazing. It's going to be incredibly interactive, and uh, it's such a great community event. So good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Singh. Hi, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I just love all opportunities, especially when, uh, in art when it's inclusionary. And, uh, you know, just everyday citizens can participate in it. Uh, so this is great and a uh, great idea. Did you say that you're going to be going around different community centers as well? Yeah, I'm tr- I'm, my goal is to try to bring people to the community centers as a, a place to gather for these. Okay, that's, that's yeah. perfect. Yeah. And I would re- encourage you, hopefully, um, seek out opportunities to engage with the specific ward counselor so that they can help get the word out, the more participants we can bring in, and just uh, showcase what you're trying to do. That uh, would, be, uh, would be my pleasure, I'm sure, my colleagues as well. So that's great. And encouraging, like uh, the mayor has said, something outdoor, even parks as well. That would be great. Okay, thank you. What kind of park is open, by the way, if you want to do it there? (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Mayor Johnson. Or Councillor Johnson, sorry. (laughs) Yeah. A promotion, that's great. I just wanted to thank you so much. This is so exciting. I see actually, um, I see a picture here of, uh, of my church, um, of you, uh, you doing some work there. And I just think this is going to be so much fun. In fact, I think council would make a really good, uh, a really good oh. band so we could get, <laughs> get started with that. And uh, I can't wait to see you out at the community centers. Um, as uh, Councillor Singh was saying, um, I... I'd love to uh, have you contact me. We can do something at Victoria Hills Community Center. Would be uh, would be wonderful. So this is really incredible, and I think it's great that this year we've we've um, done something in uh, in music. Um, mm. It's it's been amazing what we've what we've had so far. But to kind of look at different areas of art, I think is really great, and I am incredibly excited. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Schneider. Thank you, Chair Davey, and, and, and thank you. This is uh, incredible. As you were talking about this, and Councillor Singh was mentioning community centers, I was going through my mind how awesome this would be at community centers and our, our faith uh, centers as well. So uh, looking forward to this and the community engagement and making it so unique. So, uh, and I think the council idea is really good. I think Councillor Ida and I just plays mean Tupperware, so uh, it should be great. <laughs> thank you, Councillor yeah, Chapman. Yeah, I just agree with what everybody's saying. Um, but we do have an outdoor cherry festival every year. So um, add that to your list, please. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Councillor Marsh. Okay, and I'll echo the, the positive comments. We're all, we're all excited. We all want you at our, in our wards. Um, but what I want to know is, um, you know, uh, I want you to know that uh, we, uh, I think you should feel free to adjust your plan uh, according to the, um, how it goes the first initial couple workshops because it's possible that you'll want to just go to where there already is a, a mm-hmm. crowd like at Cherry Park or Multicultural Festival or whatever it is so that you don't uh, spend a lot of time just trying to get people to your workshop rather and focus on the, the making of the art uh, it, I think is um, key but um, you know all the best with, with it and I look forward to working with you um, in Ward 10 when you come. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I Just a, a word of caution. I did note that your uh, it's, it's called junk music, so you got to be careful. You might end up getting a, drawing a lot of fans of Nickelback to these things. <laughs> Couldn't resist, sorry. Uh, there, there are no other comments in the queue. It's a movement mayor of a banish. Typically on the artists and residents, we do uh, have a recorded vote on this. I think it's appropriate here. Uh, so we'll take a recorded vote now. Okay, voting's open. And it's unanimous. Congratulations. Thank you for your support. 
Okay, we're moving on to the final item of finance and corporate services, the cellular tower land lease. I don't think staff's making any presentation on this, so it would be questions only. Councillor Gazzola. Yeah, I question, I'm not, I, I don't totally understand what we're doing with the funding. Uh, why, uh, why, would, why would this not just go into general city funding? Do you not have enough money in that digital Kitchener that you're, that's already in the budget? I don't understand why funding has to be allocated specifically uh, to that area. Mr. Murray. So through you, Mr. Chair, the, there's actually no funding for Digital Kitchener uh, in terms of our strategy. Items are to come back to Council and, and be funded on a one-on-one, on one-by-one one basis. Uh, what we are uh, going to be doing in the next, uh, hopefully by April time frame, is to come back with a uh, public access uh, uh, standard and uh, some in, uh, improvements in, and codifying some of the uh, program that we already have in terms of uh, public access computers and expansion of public Wi-Fi. There is no budget funding for that at this time, so it will be something that we'll be looking forward, and we're looking to uh, uh, be able to uh, put some of the, the funding from this uh, tower on, on the city land and the lease uh, towards those as it uh, uh, progresses. But that program will be a, a council. I, I, I have no problem with supporting funding for your program, but on a standalone basis. I don't, you know, when, once, when we start getting a source of revenue and then all of a sudden directing it to a specific area, I, I don't see the need for that. So uh, I, I have no problems with the program, okay, and where we're going here. When we do come to this, I would like a recorded vote, and I'd like the two parts separated. Okay. Certainly. Uh, Councillor Gallo Seelock. Yeah, I just uh, wanted to know if the residents were kept up to date on this report coming forward. Yes, so I contacted everyone who had registered and uh, uh, received confirmation that they were not going to come and address the committee. Okay, thank you. Okay, I, all of my questions were anticipated in the report, especially with respect to... Uh, to 5G coming back. Uh, I'm happy to see this before us. I think it's, it's a great opportunity. My only question is, it's, uh, and actually I'm very happy to see the, that the funding is um, proposed to go back to uh, digital Kitchener initiatives. Uh, my only question is, I, I'm not really sure it's necessary, the equally split funding for community. We're not talking a huge amount of money and it might just be an extra hoop for you to jump through. Would it be, is it significant whether it's customer facing or internal? Uh, Mr. Chair, the uh, intent of splitting the uh, uh, funding was really to provide some um, level of benefit back to the areas that are, are involved in hosting the tower as well. Uh, there has been significant amount of work in moving this forward, so we chose digital transformation in initiatives uh, within those areas um, to be prioritized uh, for that. Uh, okay, I see. So it's, yeah, I'm not sure that was explicit in the report that it was to go back to the area, but that, that's fine. I understand that now. Okay. Uh, no one else in the queue. I'm very much supportive. Has someone moved this? I don't think so. Can I get a mover? Councillor Singh. Uh, any comments or questions? Or comments, sorry, not seeing any. Okay, we're going to vote on it in two parts as requested by <coughs> Councillor Gazzola. We will vote on the first part, um, the first part of the recommendation now. Those in favor? Recorded vote on, on both. So on page 7-1, uh, we're voting on the portion between the, uh, the first paragraph. And that carries unanimously, and now we'll vote on the second clause that the funding go to Digital Kitchener. Nobody look at your screens. Okay, and that motion carries. Okay, uh, sorry, those in favor? And opposed? Okay, very good, that concludes Finance and Corporate Services. We'll see everyone at 7 p.m.